337, Christopher, head coach of Space Station Gaming, SSG, is joining us today. We're going to break down stage one of EMEA, maybe even get in a little bit of NA talk if time permits. We've got a new hero in Venture. They're digging around, rolling around at the speed of sound. They're actually not rolling. They're mostly just digging. Um, the Face It League apparently is now a thing. We'll probably have to talk about that. Um, and we'll decide whether or not... This is actually the Game of Thrones era of Overwatch. Chris, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having me again. Fourth, fifth time? What do you reckon? It's, it's, I feel like you're just, you have to be just an honorary member at this point. Just too, yeah. too many times. Well, also a rival, right? I mean, okay, I don't, I, I've I never. Have a, I have a bone to pick. Like, uh, Everill okay. Avril f- actually phrased that perfectly. Everill said, like, playing the Fortress arc and thinking this is rivalry is like, failing yeah. the uh the sp- prisoner's dilemma in real time <laughs> that was the phrase that he used i i, be- I believe that's true as well I, I i never believed in rivalry like we're not nope. really doing with th- what platchett is doing either yeah and- no 100 percent. i was always never under the illusion that like we were ever gonna get plat chat numbers and we covered different things that, Brother, like, I, I feel like we were interested in different things that plat chat were so it's like if people like plat chat cool if people like uncoachables great like we need more people eating up the content we need more like eyes on product so the more the merrier if, i i honestly genuinely believe that if i was genuinely just optimizing for viewership you'd probably know the color of my butthole by now okay <laughs> Like I, I Lo- loving the demonetization. Love that. Great. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> I, I, I looked at the time. It's t- two minutes in. <laughs> We're good. Okay, good. At least you're, at least you're aware. It's good. Yeah. I see the opposite. I see it as a pure rivalry. Plat chat are my arch nemesis. Is hell yeah. um, And I will do everything in my power well to take them to take them down. You know they started to pay guests. That's the word on the street. There's the Whoa. other thing they started to Real uncoachable, hours out here. Yeah, it's, since uncoachable came on the scene, they started to have to pay people to keep up with us. You know, we, we just get them for free. People want to come on our show, whereas Plat just begging them to come on. That's just a rumor, though. I haven't heard it. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> would Would you go if they invited you? Uh, they never have once, you know. Like all my podcasts, ah, that's where you guys all the interviews. Oh, like they've never <laughs> once invited me. I see them invite some like really boring people who are like shit, and then they never once invited me, no matter what. So, but you know, at this stage, fuck them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're they're like they're like the the light, and you guys are the shadow. Okay, that like they are they're fundamentally like just on the other side of the moon, you know. Sure. I see them, the the plat chat, that guy's like the cast is the analyst, all of them, they're like the establishment. They're the Overwatch oh, the establishment. Oh, true, the man. That have been, they've been holding us back for years. And what we need is some form of a revolution to take them down. You know, I saw, I saw your episode with Custer on the other day, and he just made the list, you know, when he talked about the, like, when you guys were discussing the Uncoachable podcast, mm-hmm. and when Custer starts saying, oh, the only reason they were successful is because they clickbait Koreans and flame the casters. <laughs> I'm like, that's why... That's why the establishment has got to go because these people are out of touch. They don't understand why Uncoachable is successful. It's not because we just clickbait. It's because we actually have a, a, a sense of humor which resonates with the actual Overwatch audience. Yes, you know? like we I actually agree with that. We don't mm-hmm. just have a sense of humor which is so unbelievably PG, washed, like just like there's no like actual human being like humor in it, you know? And I understand yeah. why. Like I'm not even like saying, oh yeah, they should be more edgy because I understand like like blizzard and overwatch but I, when he said that i'm like and when he makes a little comment like oh i like to say nice things on the internet i'm like yeah yeah okay good man yeah like say nice things on the internet that's like the thing that's is fucking fantastic you know i i agree but i also think you guys like i remember the gamba episode where you guys said like basically execute a caster every season in in the you know public court and make an example out of them i feel like that what was not acknowledged is that cast is also just beholden to the you know broadcast rules and like the Disney Plus appeal that they ha- have to have you know like I, nah, okay. some of those guys I, had I potty think... mouths too like they just like, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's true for sure like right? I'm not I understand that. that's what I mean like I understand why the broadcast is like has to be like PG you know mm-hmm. um, and I think there was obviously an element of humor when Gumba is talking about taking people out back and shooting yeah, them, you know? Sure, yeah. But even though, you know, you know, the way he builds his teams, you wouldn't know. Yeah. 
he loves to shoot people in the back of the head when he can. Um, but you also know that there was like a few games casted this weekend where had there been some sort of Hunger Games situation that maybe we would have had better <laughs> casting, I think. And I think you agree with it too, even though you won't admit it. Look, okay, what I will say is we're now also in a different situation where like, I feel like, and I said this always, and I said this in back channels as well, once you make it financially infeasible to just cast one game, necessarily the quality of your casting yeah, of will deteriorate, right? Like, yeah. you, if being a two or three or four game Andy is so challenging, especially like in being able to have an understanding mm -hmm. of what's going on on the screen, especially in an ever-changing game as Overwatch, right? Yeah. Um, but I will say, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't, like, there's... there's a couple of casting duos that are not perma mute for me, just because like I also watch a lot with friends um, in Discord, and usually like you know hanging out with the boys and like chatting some shit is yeah a a more interesting experience, and I think that's also the appeal of co-streaming. I think co-streaming to me personally is a much more appealing product. Um, by the way, tell Commander X you should stop shoutcasting during sco streams i think that's that makes yeah little sense we spoke about it i've spoken about it before i'm not i'm unsure like i always felt the same that like it would be better if he just but i think especially because he doesn't normally have guests on yeah i i almost feel like what i always find is the best overwatch experience is when x is actually gets a lobby slot so he does the overhead so he yeah. does the observing and casts it and i'm like ah, okay i actually fully know what's happening like he explains every play i get to see every play i'm like okay if, if visit just done it is all of the observer and cast him and he just gave it to x make me like level up their product and presumably like save 80 percent of their um their cuts but yeah i'm not sure like i don't know where to go like because sometimes i'll join in and then when obviously when i join in and gubba joins in like there's no casting we're just like talking shit mm -hmm. about stuff and um, but i also feel like when he's on his own that maybe like casting is like a slightly like preferable way than just sat there talking i'm actually not sure i think it's a, definitely a, harder to just stand there like just sit at a camera and, and just like talk to nobody at least like as a cat like if you if you assume the 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 archetype of a caster you have like a job to do you're you know you have like a, a a guiding like you have a north star to kind of like point towards and be like okay well i'm going to talk about this and that and this if you just sit there i don't know it could get a little awkward i, I can yeah. see where he's coming from I think in order to appeal to this audience, you let, gotta let your little Emma Gremlin come out a little bit. You probably want to sit on your feet on your chair and, like, you know, casual it out if you're alone. Otherwise, like, the the counter example is like the S LS Avast deal yeah. where you just invite a yeah. lot of folks yeah. to chat shit. And sometimes it also just goes off topic because the game is not very interesting. And that's also yeah, good man, to that's okay. s sort of get away from it. I think, like, it's it's a noble ideal, but I think eventually it will just prove to not be super fit. I think people actually do not really care about analysis. Like if if uh, X started calling people shit and whatnot, and like actually started calling people out, I think that might be something that resonates. Oh, we are so, we are so primed for that. If if somebody wanted to, you know, not to kick a dead horse, like assume the role of LS within Overwatch. Holy, oh my God, the the numbers you would pull. We are so yeah. ready for just a, a shit lord to come in and just tell everybody that they're shit and that their macro sucks and that you shouldn't be playing this comp and that comp. It doesn't even matter if you're right. Just if you have the 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 absolute like cojones to like want to do that and shoulder that, you you you'd make some money. Yeah. I will say that I, I obviously he's one of my best friends in the scene. Um but I do feel like what X has done is actually been really important for the scene i yeah. feel like mm -hmm. um he i sometimes when i watch the content x puts out and i put like the level of like analysis and like the reviews and the core streams and the interviews and all this sometimes that's where i look at the establishment figures and think fuck you guys like should have been doing this you know like the level of like passion for overwatch that mm -hmm. x has in terms of like watching everything breaking down like like really really like like follows the scene you know like what you said yiska was four thousand percent true right that like if you can't live off casting overwatch full time you can't you can't like dedicate everything to it right but there's also like a part of me which saw like necker would like finish casting and then immediately go play like tft on stream during the na games and there's always a part of me which like mm. i think i have like that like gumba mentality where like 
uh, like I'm so all in on this and like I'm willing to take like sure. a like a, a lower salary and I see people like X who are willing to like not like to give up a salary to follow it um, and whilst like I, for sure I understand like the the reasons why you know let's play TFT and let's stream this or let's do this um, the thing yeah, is- th- that's where like sometimes it like something inside of me like it rubs me the wrong way a little bit you know i think yes i understand what you mean but you'd also would probably say like there's there's an argument to be made for coverage right like how many hyper goblins are there actually in the audience and would you not extend it if you had more approachable normal people that you know you could actually let roam free in the free world without you know um just just like someone or some appeal and widening uh, the the appeal of the broadcast. Because let let's be honest, like I have the same I struggle for a better word, but elitist bend. I understand it. I think especially like guys like us have also take like I I think there are a lot of people in the uh, scene that could just be making way more money elsewhere. Um, yeah. and have opted not to do so because for the love of the game. And the the coexistence feels initially like a problem, but you have to understand that this is not someone taking away value, but actually just applying it and bringing in another audience that ultimately also feeds back into it. Because there is a self-contained amount, and I agree, like... Where I definitely agree with you, and I think that's something that Co- Uncoachable brought to the audience, is that it, that the the hardcore gremlin mode that actually is like the player base is, especially the pro player base, um, which is the core of e- every esport, right? The people that make make it a little bit more comfortable to have these frank talks um, yeah. and have that drama, and also can sustain the the naysayers and keep talking through it. Um, that's definitely something that was entirely underserved in our uh, yeah and like i think yeah. i think you maybe said it in a tweet where you like you you said oh well uncoachable wouldn't have like existed during the, the overwatch league days yes, um, and yeah. i think you're fundamentally right you know like I, I don't even think like the humor we use on uncoachable is like outrageous you know like i think that maybe we make uh like too many jokes related to like uh, like 1940s polit- uh, European politicians, <laughs> um, but um, like for the most part, I think that we're like we're relatively on the edge, and I don't think we say stuff like that's like, like too like out there and offensive. But I also think it wouldn't have, and there's no way our org, like Cloud9 would, or, or like the Overwatch League would have, for sure, been in our DMs like, mm-hmm. yo, please like stop doing this, you know. Mm. Um, and I, I don't know what, if you were to predict, but like I, my feeling somewhere is that even in Overwatch, which like probably has like a different, um, what's the word? Like the player base, like demographic is probably different in Overwatch than it is in Call of Duty versus other games. Yeah. I still think that like the sense of humor that like Unta and the uncoachable brand, I still think we're at like 85% of play, Overwatch players exist in that type of humor, even if we have like a lower percentage than other games. Yes, but keep in mind, like Overwatch League was not shooting for a player viewer base only, right? It wanted to attract people that not don't necessarily play the game and wanted to be self-sustaining and not profit share from the game. Like the the like the <clears throat> esports division was relatively separate and was strategizing as to be self-sufficient from revenue sources that aren't effectively tied into the game, right? And therefore also looked at. Uh, outside sources and it, like a lot of these decisions you just have to look top down who's making those decisions who's actually making those calls who wants to be on disney plus what is the yeah. benefit yeah. Fit, fit there right and i think shooting for casters is probably shooting too low i i think yes yeah. there's probably a selection uh question which i i mean my elitist agrees with but there's still something to be said about the scope. Had it worked, I think, like, which, in, in my opinion, I, it never would have. But um, had it worked that way, it just makes sense uh, in the way the league was set up around re- uh, broadcast revenue structures, right? Like, if your biggest revenue source is broadcasting and you have to be PG'd for that, like, of course, that's your broadcast direction. 
And that's your selection for talent. And that's what you tell them in every meeting. And that's when you cut back on uh, the edginess of maybe season one and season two. And then you prune players for really not that edgy content on Twitter and establish a pattern of communication from players where they just do not want to communicate as much, right? Um, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I feel like I should say too, like, I feel like actually the casters one was one that was brought, like when we did that episode, like I got like, I almost every caster DMs me in one way or another. And then some of them were like, <laughs> really like quite upset. Some of them were like, uh, kind of agree with you, to be honest. Um, and there was like, like, there was like a real like mix, but I feel like, I, I, don't, I feel like A, I don't think we go after the casters every week. And B, I think sure. that like our criticism more than anything is like, is at the product and i think you're probably right ultimately like the people that we are like attaching the blame to or criticizing are like the casters and the broadcast yeah. whereas yeah. a lot of the decisions that get made are not made by them and they're just like kind of told but it's also hard for me to figure out like who else to like to they criticize no for the product yeah, it's, you know? it's That's completely faced yeah 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 100 yeah, yep. yeah. 100%. so uh, yeah, yeah like a lot of it is just like criticism of like because obviously what i want because i want like the scene to grow like for my own benefit i'm not like some yeah. sort of like selfless individual and um, i think that the product wasn't as good as i would have wanted it to be and i look at other esports games and i thought our product was worse yeah. um but i like i've said i think I, even on uncoached but i think i said it like i don't necessarily blame like the casters for that i think there was probably one or two casters which i don't think should have been like casting at that level um, and 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 one thing or another but like for the most part i don't think like the casters are to blame for the overwatch product i do think that clearly it was like a management decision above them and a lot of them were kind of yeah, just following orders for lack of a better term. It's it's also just like fundamentally a lot of these suits not understanding what is actually interesting about it. Esports. And this is where like a little bit of the acquired wisdom for the EFG crowd comes in. I think for instance, like in their Counter Strike circuit and um desk work, I think they're they're almost leaning into the co streaming vibe. They're much more loose. Yeah. They're allowed to drop F bombs now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think fundamentally that is a much more compelling product that actually hits at the core gamer audience uh, in a m better way. But yes, you have to get rid of uh, most of the sponsorship, big sponsorship brands, monetization or revenue streams in terms of like, you have to build that you can work without them, right? Like how Riot is now looking towards monetization more of the in-game items and having everyone have a share there, right? If you want a peachy clean brand, even it's not just the broadcasting rights, but it's also like with a super edgy product, are you getting Coca-Cola, right? Yeah. You might you yeah. might get someone else. You might get some crazy energy brands, right? There's also definitely, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, currently at the PGL majors, they are legitimately sponsors that are illegal to advertise for in Denmark with one expat. So they're definitely skirting the line there as well. Um, hmm. But yeah, like you, it, that just means like that revenue stream is then gone. And we're not there yet in terms of the scene setup because the monetization alternatives right now in Overwatch, like the price pool split, we don't know what, what level of effort yeah. Blizzard will put into these um, skins, right? Like, and yeah. revenue, yep. revenue share is like, Crowdfunding, okay, but revenue share with teams is so far away, right? If anything, like it, it, now it seems more likely that Face it might be playing, uh, trying to play for, uh, you know, another Louvre agreement that they got shot down for in CS, right? Like it, Louvre agreement being a partnership with the teams. I'm not saying that's something something I heard behind the scene, uh, the, the scenes, but like if you if you let Face it run your circuit, you're opening certain uh, liberties up, right? Yeah. Um. And effectively, let's be honest, EFG is, in, in, in essence, the Esports World Cup. There's a lot of stipends flying around the scene right now uh, of the uh, Esports World Cup. So effectively, that's already in some way happening here. Okay? So I, 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 I kind of see like, the revenue streams working differently. But also, let's be honest, like, the average salary in this scene is not great. And for... Even for the good paid teams, not the best paid teams, but the good paid teams, barely livable. Sure, of course. Yeah. I think, 
like I, I think our salary is probably one of like the higher across all teams and even for us like i think we're very aware that we need like decent prize pool to be able to kind of yeah. like or like the the world cup prize pool you know and mm-hmm. um, i think like from our side like falcons are running like they're mm-hmm. they're okay um and i i feel like toronto's isn't like isn't overwatch league level but isn't bad but beyond that i feel like yeah most of them are like yeah the salary is okay but you need you, people need like a second source either streaming or uh, prize pools or or whatever it is you know it's actually quite sad what what is an interactive offer right now for unsponsored mm-hmm. players and what can Anything. seriously be entertained right for for someone that's just outside and wants to make some money back or have some opportunity to uh mm-hmm. travel more right um needless to say, the, the the disparity of resources is crazy to me like for instance you cannot compare what um like let's say the lower sponsored teams that still have a brand attached to them no. with like Falcons or with like Toronto they offer a salary that's yes not Overwatch League level but they also offer housing right then compare that to the lower ranking like sponsored teams some of them are triple digit euros or uh dollars yeah Right, up hundred bucks not, here. Not, you know? not four digits, triple digits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No housing. Nope. You're probably losing after the money, like after your contract runs out, and probably not over the entire annual le- year, and on electricity and you know, like, um, <laughs> pay for internet and whatnot, right? Um, and your hardware, which some teams also have not included. Right, it's it's just like it, being sponsored is not b- being sponsored in the same way that some teams are. Yeah, not all yeah. built equally. It's for it's for goddamn sure. Yeah, I think realistically, like two, three teams in each region will be able to make a living, um, and beyond that, you just it's, it has to be a passion project or like hope. Because yep. the pro- the problem is like. When it was like this type of salary back in the day, there, there was this like promised land, this holy land of yep. the Overwatch League, where you'll actually earn a lot of money, you know. And like, I was there for five years, so I actually have like <laughs> pretty decent savings yeah. from that. Mm-hmm. So for me, in those first few years, when I was on Hammers Esports, getting scammed around, and I went yep. to Mosaic and I got scammed around, <laughs> like it was all, it was all for like the the greater good, you know. Like there was like this like end goal at some point. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas now, like, like. I don't know the details of Ence's contract, so I'm obviously not going to like sit here and like try to guess it. But sure. like for Ence to be able to like rip Chase Torch from EXO, I don't think they're offering like buyouts no. or like a good salary. Like yeah. they, it t- takes very little to come like convince someone to join like a team at this level, you know? Yeah. And you you bring up like that promised land, and we obviously have a little bit of. Uh... An idea of like how teams are going to be qualifying to this new promised land wait the, wait let me know. before you switch topics let me squeeze okay. chris real quick for yeah some juice your fusion uh fusion salary or let's say your best coaching salary would probably be on par with the best paid player in the game right now no um my spitfire and my fusion salary like once i renewed on fusion was 80k um that was the highest i've ever been paid um so i think falcons are maybe in that ballpark yeah but it's pure guesswork Mm -hmm. or like what i hear it's a lot i mean 80k is really really fine like yeah like with housing included like yeah yeah it's it's really okay yeah with housing housing included did you have food as well right so Who's the seven? first year on Fusion, I got paid, I think it was 60k, but I had to do my own housing. So I had to uh, um, I had to rent a studio apartment in the expensive area of LA. So I basically broke even on it. Uh, and then when I, um, when we renegotiated the contract, I think that, I, I think they, uh, we agreed to do housing and Spitfire obviously covered housing and both, all my contracts covered food. Um, so food was never an issue. Housing was an issue for two years, um, but not like the last three. Mm. Yeah, fair. Yeah, and okay. I, 
I he also heard very different rumors on the Falcons uh, salary, so I won't comment on that. But yeah, I think like that's but outside of those contracts, barring like any unannounced orcs or you know like outside shot. I I'm not sure what Rock is paid or what Twisted Minds is paid, right? But sure. like any other um, organization that's reasonably in my orbit is not remotely close, right? No, I, I think you're right. I think even like TM and Rock, like from what I understand, a lot of the contracts for a lot of the teams are very. I mean, I guess Overwatch League wasn't even too right. Like Kevs, they would get paid more than like the rookie that joined Gladiators that season. Um, but I think that like for example, I'm guessing if you checked like Rock's checkmate salary will be more significant than than one of the like the Saudi yeah. players. Mm -hmm. Um, and it feels like there is like um, for most teams, maybe not Toronto or Falcons, like a little bit of like unevenness. Yeah, it makes sense. Did you put a lot of value on uh, price pool splits for your current contracts? That was our biggest priority. Yeah, we would. Uh, we had two offers from two orgs. Um, one org was offered a higher salary, but they wanted to take split. like a fifty-fifty split between us, Oof. and then SSG. Um, I probably won't go into my contract too much. It feels Fair. like something I shouldn't yeah. do. But they probably gave not. us a much nicer um, price pool split, um, which, you know, assuming that you finish, let's say, above fourth place in Europe, I think is the correct decision uh, to take. Would you say which other orc offered? Um, we were speaking a little bit to Fnatic, um, okay. but I don't know what's happened with them since then mm -hmm. i feel like that's that's always a name that's kicked around in overwatch and i feel like as we get closer to the world cup um that was kind of like my next follow-up was like you know you talked about like that that one that that golden path to walk in those early days of overwatch and you had like a direction to like point to and and a goal to work towards it, do you feel like the World Cup is is that for you guys right now? Do you feel like this is just like a growing pain that, you know, as we get closer to the World Cup, as we get more details, like the money will start coming in, orgs will be a little bit more interested once we really get entrenched in who's qualifying, who's not qualifying, you know, teams like Fnatic maybe come back? My guess, and I'm sure Yiska will nod or shake his head, my <laughs> guess is every team that does qualify for the World Cup, all 16 of them will be sponsored. I think oh, that's all, almost like guaranteed. The question yeah. will be for, like, let's say EXO finish third in Europe. Sure. Um, they would get picked up by an org, I'm sure of it, but the question would be, would that org want them to play just for the tournament and give sure. them some sort of, like, deal there? Or... Um, would the organization look to sign them as a more of a full-time thing? That much I'm unsure about. But my feeling is that like the way that the orgs did it, you either got an early, like maybe like Space Station and End State mm -hmm. or M80 and try to secure the best roster you can. Or if you're like not quite there, then you just wait to see who qualifies and just pick up what you can um, later on. That's literally guesswork, but I feel confident that's that's how it'll mm -hmm. go. I don't think there'll be a single unsponsored team at the World Cup by the no time shot. they play. No. Yeah, in any shoot. game, I think. I, I, I think the problem we really have is we do not really know how the esports World Cup's point system will work, right? Mm. Maybe, maybe it's just worth getting your brand out there in in the World Cup in a different game for relatively little uh, buy-in cost. That's very possible. Um, I think every every esports organization that's in this sector probably had a good idea about just about everything that's currently being announced, including the Face It League, including yeah. uh, the participation of uh, Overwatch at the uh, Esports World Cup. That much has not been a secret. So yes, there were like other orcs prone, pr uh, probing around, also the North American scene, also Tier 1 orcs. I, I just wonder why nobody finds value here. Right, and you might be right that eventually people will come in, but it really de will depend on is is the viewership high enough to justify just picking up someone for that event, and will you keep them around after? And then the point system is it just summation, or yeah. is it you can only get like you know put your best five results of your teams into the average ranking, 
or do certain esports give more points than other esports? And how does Overwatch yeah. relate here? Right? I think There's all so those are like super important, but I think the end, like the ultimate, like linchpin of it all, is like there is just too money, too much money, not to just throw, try to throw a contract at like an EXO or a Rock or you know one of these unsigned like good teams that could qualify and just try to get a percentage of that cut. You know what I mean? Like ultimately, like nobody's not going to be there. The thing they're, is, like there, there will you... always be signed team, whether or not like take that as an or not. That's that's another thing. Right? Like if sure. I'm if I'm relatively confident as an unsigned org right now, I'm probably yeah. not signing and trying to, you know, have someone take something from my price pool cut. Right? Yeah, it would. The offers, like from an organization point of view, mm -hmm. it feels like um, they would have to offer you something like pretty significant, like in terms of like, oh, we'll pay you 20K plus we'll take like 10% of the prize pool. Because obviously players are never like you they call it like the club program, right? Where like there is yeah, like the right. world the club the clubs will like go in the leaderboard and they'll get points for each game. It feels like the clubs themselves, like the players are not gonna take any money of that prize pool. So the right. orgs are gonna take a hundred percent of that. So you can I think like especially if you do it for one of like the smaller games like a Starcraft or an Overwatch, yeah. I think you can conceivably offer like a pretty good amount of prize pool to the players because yeah. you're gonna take all of the prize pool from Right. If that the contributes enough, yes, I agree. Yeah, I think my feeling is there's no way Overwatch counts for more points in League of Legends. I just can't no, see. Not. Yeah, no. um, but I don't. I, I literally have no idea. This is just me like predicting how the tournament's right. going to go. Like there is no like insider information here. I also wonder if Riot is even going to be there this year. I I, I would stipulate at this point that it's probably not going to happen. But we'll see. It is. It is getting you know long in the tooth it's it's been a minute i know you know jacob Wolf, did they not originally agree, agree a deal but then never confirmed they, it presumably backlash I, I think, related mm, i think it's just like really hard to make work on this shorter notice uh around there like they left some leeway in the in the calendar but i i think it's non-trivial and honestly like I'm not sure if the esports world cup is just very gated with the information and like everything is already like super clear behind like tight NDAs or if it's actually a little bit chaotic behind the scenes in terms of like what kind of time window you can realistically expect these competitions to happen. Um, was was there not, correct me if I'm wrong, was there not some article by like quite a reputable was. source? Yes. yes. Like but before it's... any announcements in Riot for the first time in history is partnering with a third party tor tournament organizer? Right. So the the report was in a, in a report talking about uh, the possibility or like looking at it and Riot try to sell it as we're just looking at third party tournament organizers um, mm. but like the uh, then internally also selling that it's actually a good thing and you know yada 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 yeah. but whatever right like you can think about that but, uh, what you will but the, the it was never like about the confirmation of their participation but more confirming that they're currently in talks about it and I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if it would be backlash related, um, mm. more so than log logistics. But that's just like my my gut feeling. Um, looking at like the outside, I I have no internal information on on that. It just feels like it's maybe maybe they're currently really still hashing that out. Um, and it's yeah. yet to be announced. Uh, it's it's getting closer though because you need mm -hmm. qualifying methods. I mean, you nope. s I suppose you could uh, use like a top three LCS or something, right? Yeah, um, we'll see how how it works there. But uh, yeah, I generally agree. Like that, we already know that Fortnite, Rainbow Six, uh, Counter Strike, like Overwatch is not going to give more points than Counter Strike. No. I don't see it. Right? No, I agree. So then if you're if you're already not getting the best team in the world, how many points are you realistically getting for your team? And what's the in investment there? I think what, what we might see is some teams just going like, ah, might as well roll the dice. We have some facilities here. We'll we'll offer you a boot camp slot. Maybe we even have apartments here. You can sign with us for the duration, can boot camp here, and then we'll uh I'm I'm not sure how the uh, traveling accommodations are paid for. I just assume uh, esports World Cup would pay for that, and um, 
those deals I could see, especially if mm-hmm. the price pool sl- split is like a modest ninety ten or something, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In those cases, I think that there's a lot of value where even an unsigned team could look at the cost benefit analysis and think that they might come out ahead and then hopefully convince with their performance at the actual event. Right. And uh, get a long term contract with the team. It's just, it's, I feel like Overwatch is currently in such a limbo state where. The investment is like, especially from Blizzard, is way too low, right? To be at all confident going forward. And it feels really like everyone's just looking towards the first LAN tournaments and the development and the growth charts of viewership um, in terms of the co streaming and general streaming appeal. And then uh, one litmus test will be. Uh, how much profit those skins generate for them mm-hmm. yeah. to realistically and by the way like if I'm if I'm one of you guys I'm looking at Celsius play- playbook and probably bend together that's that's an actual um, prisoner's dilemma situation where like you all want to be promoting that that pack yeah. in order to you know it's not just like about the money that you directly get but also the confidence in the model of revenue sharing that you then inspire into the developer and the developer putting out more skins or more appealing products and giving more resources, therefore attracting more organizations. It's like a, a short-term and a long-term win, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like everyone's just waiting for something to happen. And even... that's That was a good inf- interview by uh, X, by the way, with uh, Bailey, who where she just said, like, okay, we're... Like, our goal for this year is to just do it. That's what it yeah. feels like right now. No, 100%. I feel like that was kind of like, and I feel like we even talked about it on the show, that, like, this was going to be a huge, like, a big opportunity for Blizzard to, like, sink some money in, but it's so difficult to both build the product and, like, find what new direction that you're, you're going to go in on, you know, relatively short notice. Um, and also gather the the confidence in the market to be able to fund it you know because it's at this point it, it probably isn't going to be from blizzard they just scuttled a multi-million dollar esports league i can't imagine that they're going to be fronting the cost too much they're not going to be wanting to front the cost you don't put it that way. you don't have to well, all you need to do is develop like try to give some developing attention especially in the uh, microtransaction market and see if that generates a, a incentive structures where both the esports teams and players right. are incentivized to sell the skin and you're incentivized to uh, promote through that especially if i'm already like not getting my profit share because mm-hmm. i'm undercutting uh, goals set by the team and i do- i don't know how to sc- sell skins in this game maybe esports could be one thing to- like they they are in the esports why the esports industry right they are sort of different signals being sent. So for instance, in Dota, there is a plausible case that esports themselves actually do not really offer that much of an attraction. Because what happened Mm -hmm. was, as soon as TI dropped like the full effort where the actual skin bundle, um, the pass, was the actual attraction because the skins were super dope and like those attracted these huge price pools. As soon as they scaled it down and made it really more about esports brands, the price pool dropped off a cliff, right? Right. It was actually for the consumer, it was about the value of the what, what was in that battle pass. Not necessarily what uh or companion or whatever it was called, right? Um well, at the same time, if you look over at CSGO, and yes, it's a very different economy there, but there's 110 million generated in sticker revenue just for teams yep. at the Paris Major. We don't know what it's, it will be right now. Um, in League of Legends, you, uh, sorry, in uh, Valorant, it seems to be popping off, right? Like, we, we don't have figures yet. I would say, like, that would be something where, like, the, the very eSports product, it's not that the skins look great. They actually look quite ass. Yeah, but course. it is about the, the like being part of their experience, and people buy it in order to identify it with these esports. Yeah, brands, it's a right? fandom. So, yep. like, they are confusing signals. Still, I would, I would say, also once again bringing back the number from what I heard at uh, 
at a useful one cologne. Yes, keep in mind, this is probably a biased source, but it, like, Jens Hilgers of Bitcraft said that he... So Bitcraft is one of the biggest esports and gaming VCs around. Mm -hmm. um, he said, like, there's, there's data to believe that between 15 and 45% of the League of Legends player base got there through esports. Okay? So if you're struggling sure. for player base, that's another selling point that you might look towards, especially in a game that now doesn't have PvE, right? So, yeah. like, yes, I, I understand. <laughs> we just killed a $500 million yeah. esports franchise league, and it, it, mainly because it didn't create the buzz. But maybe you also have to look at why the World Cup only generated 500,000, while other esports products generate 1 in 10 million for their teams, right? Like, and I'm not sure about revenue splits, but yes, there's like a, like a, you know, two standard deviations uh, mm -hmm. difference here, right? Um, and I think that's, like, if I'm a developer, I'm looking at that. I'm trying to give, maybe give it a little bit more. Um, I mean, they are the viewership incentives. Fair enough. They're giving us something, right? But yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, like the, the, it's not enough, and it's not enough for any dedicated right. esports team to look at this system and do it for anything else but the involvement with EFG and with the esports World Cup. If we're being realistic, yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, we've talked about that as well, where it's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're here, uh, like with the announcement that Overwatch Two is participating in the esports World Cup. We know what kind of money that is being thrown around for that event. Like that ultimately is the tier one event that everybody's playing for. We are in a TI primed market to, you know, go back to Dota for a second. Um, but to not to completely synthesize what you're saying down, but it are, is your major gripe the times table on the content that is to provide confidence to the market? Like, would you have wanted that skin sooner? And do you think that is going to, you know, surpass World Cup numbers? Do, I, I want a better skin offer than what world cup offered okay like the team team skins were pretty ass was like yeah, yeah. an orange skin i want a better offer and a more something that treats esports with war with more reverence than that dallas fuel skin fair lord knows if florida, florida is even getting one probably not no no but even if that wasn't the case like the the offer that you get in order to crowdfund the the pools for Dallas and for Stockholm should just show some effort. It cannot just be a reskin, right? No, a hundred percent it can't. Yeah. If we if we load into Dallas, we're on land, we're all excited, we got our popcorn, we're back, baby. Here we go. And it's it's just a reskin soldier seventy six. Yeah, we're sell it. Sell it all. Everybody out. You you'd you'd definitely like if you got a your team skin, right? You'd you'd sell that shit, Chris, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think you're right. Like fundamentally if there was like an incentive structure, then I think it's one of the reasons why when like they announced the new like face it league and stuff, I'm gonna mm. try to like tweet about it and I'm gonna try to I'll be honest about what I think about it, but I'll also like I mean, I actually really like the idea. I think that actually it's it's a very interesting idea that like I think provides like a, a potentially like an additional layer of like sustainability. Mm. So I don't have to lie about it, thankfully. Um, but yeah, I think if you, it's why it's the same reason why I push a lot for like the streaming of the scrims because I felt like yeah. there was like this like collective, um, like the players actually have to really participate in making this grow and making yep. this like sustainable. Um, and if that means tweeting how good the Mercy skin is, then I think pro players should do it and they should wear it on stream. Um, and, and yeah, like we have to use our influence um, to, to help the game grow for our own good as anything else, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think like in now, I feel like, when when we talked about it the, in terms of like streaming scrims, I think the immediate value uh, in my mind, you know, in terms of what kind of viewership it would attract, didn't seem enough to save it. But I now see the the effects and the genius of it in terms of what it does to players, where, you know, like. You know that bear that is kept in a cage for five years and then you take the cage away and he, he's still just running in circles and doing the same thing for the rest of his life? 
sometimes you got to shove the bear, right? Like sometimes you got to show him that he doesn't actually need to walk the same circles because the cage is gone. Yeah. And I think the screaming of screaming of scrims also means you're already, you know, you have OBS up. You might, you know, chat to you, chat, chat a little bit, develop that skill set. You know, stream stream some ranked, flame there a little bit, go go a little, you know, inch closer to the type of content that actually resonates with the audience. Yeah. And d we still, <laughs> let's be honest, there are very few personalities still in this scene, but it's coming, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's still, again, it's, it, that was a huge reset. We just reset. We just, we're just finishing the first like quarter of our first year post, post Genesis. You know what I mean? Like post Overwatch League dying. We are, we are 25% of the way through. It's going to it's going to take some time. And I hate saying that because I feel like we've always said that forever, you know, in, in Overwatch, but it, it'll take some time. I think you're right that like the bear will wake up and maybe snort some cocaine and go a little crazy. One of one or two of them. Will. will they do illicit drugs? You know, time will tell. We'll see. Yeah, OK, sorry, Joe, you wanted to go into the next t uh, subject and then. <laughs> I, I had to squeeze a little for juice. Okay. <laughs> you're good. I'm, you know, welcome back to the land of the living. You, you, you've unstunlocked yourself. I'm going to quickly just ramble off the patron producers because they, they do help the show. God bless them. Uh, so episode 337 is brought to you by Battle Car Brief. I'm being bronze by Buhal Walshin, Rex Shane, Follow Melon Sugar High, our IMDRW brother, Adam L. I send you Fire Element 6 and AK. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris, for coming on the show as well. My pleasure. So, um, where do we want to go? We, we did talk kind of like lay of the land, how things are going, money, all that good stuff. We could talk about some of the games. We could talk a little bit about venture where they may fit within some things. I definitely would love to get your, your thoughts on that. Um, I would also love to, you know, yes, did just have an interview with Gunba and he had some very interesting remarks about um, how the system is being run with face it coming in. Uh, maybe even, you know, picking your brain on some of the admins. So, you know, I'll I'll catch, you know, throw you throw you the wild card. Where do you want to go? What do you want to talk about, Chris? Uh I mean we can talk about the games. Obviously I don't have too okay. much positive to say about them. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. But All right. Games. People want to hear a little bit about that. Sure. Obviously didn't go, you know, the way you wanted. Where yeah, where like were you ultimately like shooting, you know, I feel like, you know, you talked enough that I feel like you probably were shooting for the win. You know, you wanted yep. to go all the way. What was it? Prior to, you know, jumping into the call, I was kind of skimming through some of the games and it felt to me, at least like all of these like big last minute patches really kind of shook things up for everybody. But it felt like it hit you guys kind of hard. Is that like a fair assessment? Objectively, yes, but I also think we can't really use the patch as much sure, of course an excuse. I, know. Um, I get that i think when everybody was on the mauga sim comp it felt internally that i would we didn't lose a scrim actually like for the last few weeks so okay. internally like we felt very very comfortable on that comp and we were like we were really confident um and then obviously um because the establishment like the avros and the jakes <laughs> and the custers cried out that mauga was unbearably boring and um, they, the establishment took us down again and got him nerfed. Um, and then that kind of left us. Like, I mean, I don't think I've ever had it where I've had two days before the tournament, like the playoffs, where there's a patch that might be like a new one. Um, mm -hmm. I don't complain because I live in the real world. So I understand Blizzard does not give a single crap about sure, of course. us. So we are just going to have to get used to it. Um, but it definitely feels like going from like a, like a sim meta to a tracer meta is one that probably favors of a team slightly more than us um, hmm. and it kind of left us in a horrible situation where we weren't quite sure do we stick with the mauga can it still work or is there something else better um but i don't think that the patch was even like in the i don't think it was even 50 percent of the reason why we lost you know okay 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 um you did kind of like hit on one of the big like not sore points but one of the like the more stylistic things looking at you know ssg and looking at teams like twisted minds and and ents and obviously two you know very different tracer players but i felt as though that psycho was and especially in those first couple maps very like tied to hottie was that by design or was that just 
an uncomfortability in like the the macro scheme of things like was was it he was supposed to be around the Arisa at all times it felt as though that like the the pre-fight setups just weren't there and it was just kind of a lot of like standing around and waiting for like sparker to like hit something or for hottie yeah. to, like, hit like a charge like you're exactly right. I think one of the things of Soja meta is it does end up being quite slow and wait for yeah. Soja in general. But we we actually had zero minutes on Arissa in scrim. So we oh, actually no. we were totally not involved in wanting to play Arissa at all. Like we uh, were very like wanting to play Mauga and we wanted yeah. to play Dive. And um, and we felt that for whatever reason with the level that we were playing, the Mauga could no longer beat the Arissa or mm. we didn't we lost like I actually think it can, but I think one thing in esports, and maybe our team suffers from it a little bit, is when we lose confidence in something, then yes. you, you can't win. If you don't believe yep. you can win, then you can't win. That's just a fact. So I think at some point we lost confidence in the Mauga. Um, and then it does feel like if both teams are playing like Soja and Trey, so that the Orissa is just really reasonable on a lot of maps. Mm -hmm. um, so we just kind of like on Blizzard World just said, ah, yeah, maybe just go Orissa. It just like feels like we're going to do it. And we obviously were winning the mirror. Like ironically, I think, I mean, I think, like, with, I, I don't want to disrespect EXO because they literally beat me, but, like, I think we're comfortably, <laughs> like, a better team than them. Um, yeah. So, like, it does feel like if we if we got the mirror, even on a comps which we couldn't play, we could win. Um, but in terms of, like, the macro, we, we went from having, like, a 20-page book on how to yes. play Mauga in every ult situation to picking heroes, which, like, I guess, like, just the Orisa comp, which we, we had zero hours on, or zero minutes in scrims on. It felt it, it. I think that's such a anybody who's like actually going to go back and watch these games. I think you can see that literally from map to map. You look at control and like how you guys were like playing the objective, using your TPs with the Mauga to like get behind them, force movement cooldowns, and then jump on. I think it was on um, Night Market, like one of the the second few fights, like really well executed set plays. And then you go into Blizzard World, which you know credit to both teams i wouldn't want to attack that point with winston into arissa that seemed like the pain olympics and you were cosplaying as the jar i i just that seemed really fucking painful um and then I, obviously getting into like flashpoint deeper in it yeah it just felt as though you you entered with mauga it, it, there was that comfortability and then it just kind of slowly got away from you was that just more of like okay, we need to, like, tighten it down. We need to find stuff that works. Do you guys feel like you want to play Arissa? Cool, let's just do that. Is that Was it kind of just, like, a little bit loose? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think, to be fair, like, if the if the, the series was played on the Arissa mirror, we would win the series, I think. Huh. Um, uh, but they obviously, like, their coaches were very, very good about, like, recognizing where the team could win and just always picking a different hero to just, like, kind of, like, force us to catch up to them they played the swap mm. game like way better than us um and obviously we just like had the world's biggest throw in esperanka like quite quite unfathomable to lose that yeah. map yeah um but like i think the reality is like if you even if you win the map five versus exo if you're going to map five versus exo you're not beating N or tm anyway so actually the level we were going to need to be at to win this tournament we needed to be like way higher than what it was sure. even if we didn't throw an esperanka unless we came in the next day with like a different like mindset or maybe because we would have played tm it's better because we always like seem to do well against tm but we like the level we were showing in our like tournament games was mm -hmm. nowhere near high enough to win that tournament last weekend that's that's actually something that gamba said that he thought like you had a very good chance winning against tm yeah we we actually like almost have never lost a scrim to them like actually maybe literally never um they really don't like playing against dive and we were pretty committed to the dive this stage so yeah. we felt like we had like a really really good matchup against them like our scrims for most of the season went we would always lose to ends ends would always lose to tm and we would always beat tm so the way that this double limb bracket was going to go was one team was going to get favored because like <laughs> they weren't going to have to play against their nemesis you know yeah um but like what ended up happening was like the last week we like played Ents and TM and we felt like we were like comfortably beating them both, especially on like that Mauga patch. Mm. Um but yeah, I think for us there was like there was an element somewhere of um a mindset we've never had to play from like as the favorites in our heads before. Like we've what we've always been able to do quite a nice underdog story, right? Because London mm. was just always an underdog story. Yeah. Like even stage season two, we'd lost so many games that we put ourselves back into the underdog where everyone thought we were terrible again. Um, and 
<laughs> and it's easy to play from that state of mind in terms of oh everyone expects us to lose so if we lose no one's going to say anything so let's just yeah. go out there and see what happens um and when you're now on the other side of it where maybe it's like oh atlanta when they played against us and players it's like oh if we lose this this is like so embarrassing we're first seed and we're going to get knocked out by these like guys that play reinhardt like that's a really difficult place where you have to like you have to approach it from like a mental standpoint differently and i think that's what we've kind of spoke about in terms of like we really really want to change that like aspect of our mindset because i think you're right like ultimately a lot of the fights we were just playing so slow we were playing not to lose because we felt like we were the better team so as long as i don't make a mistake we win um whereas i think what needs to happen at the highest level is even if you are the better team you need to prove you're the better team you know and you have to at least like attempt to Mm -hmm. put some pressure on your opponents a lot of a lot of the notes were just like all caps like proactivity let's do something like on control it felt like we were just playing the objective you know we're we're forcing them into acting against you instead of like going after it like getting just like starting a fight rather than just kind of sitting around so i think yeah it, i guess when you talk about mentality is that something that you how how do you approach that when it, when it comes to like coaching for you, is that something that you feel like it can be more mechanical when it comes to like what compositions that you're running? Or is that something that you feel like you can kind of inspire in the players themselves, not necessarily like having to yeah. change what you're doing? You know what I mean? Well, that, that's the thing for us. Is like we clearly don't need to change too much because like yeah. in London, like season two or like I guess like season six. Hmm we were losing every scrim and then we were losing every official so <laughs> yeah. okay we were just bad like that was just like the the objective truth whereas for us it's like if we throw everything out if we throw the baby out with the bath water as they say like we're going to also throw away what is clearly a good system which is working like very consistently in practice and um, what we obviously need to do and i think when we spoke as a team i think most of the team were on like a pretty similar page where we feel like yeah i actually agree like i actually felt like we were just too passive we were too scared to like go out there and win and we want to kind of like change that we've, we've like maybe spoke about like one or two things like internally that we want to change in terms of like okay. mindset or leadership um but for us like there isn't like a, a need to radically change things because i think like our level as a team is high enough and was high enough to win mm-hmm. the tournament but it just wasn't on that weekend yep is that you- i, I kind of spoke to yes about this real fast it, not to completely squeeze you for juice, but is the thing that you guys spoke about internally when it comes to leadership. It, I have this funny feeling that as we kind of regress in terms of Overwatch and we get back into that like, you know, grassroots stuff, did the t- did the word or phrase or term of IGL come up at all? Did is there like a a restructuring of leadership? Is there a restructuring of the comms kind of happening? Yeah, a little bit, I think. I think okay. we will try to give like one or two people a little bit more responsibilities. Gotcha. Um, okay. The way our thing was working with Hove is everyone was quite comfortable calling, so everybody did call. But I think that when anyone can call, when the pressure's on, everyone can also not call because it's yep. not my job. Whereas I think sometimes yep. if you give people your calling, if they don't call in officials, then everyone can at least vaguely abuse them or something, you know? There, There's this like psychological trap that I feel like I don't remember where I heard it from. It might have been Oprah. Forgive me. Um, don't ask me why the fuck I was watching Oprah as a child. But there's this like idea that like when you're on the street and somebody is injured or like somebody's like bystander fainting, friends. the bystander. Thank you. There's I knew there was a word for it. But yeah, there there is this like big era of like bystander effect happening that like if everybody's calling, then sometimes nobody can call because everybody's just assuming that it's somebody else's job. So yeah, I think it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Yes, guy. What were you gonna say? Sorry. Um, did you try Ryan? Um, yeah, it's pretty terrible. Um, <laughs> it's also not necessary. I think I don't think we need to play Ryan at all. Um, I think the the way Blizzard of like since Overwatch two, the way Blizzard have fundamentally designed tank heroes is they don't give them shields and they don't give them mobility and they don't give them CC, so they just yep. make them like walking stats yeah. um and ram is a very difficult matchup for ryan arissa obviously as we learned in playoffs is very difficult for ryan and i think mauga is very difficult for ryan because like these heroes want to do the same job as ryan but they're just 
they weren't invented six years ago they were invented mm-hmm. after the power creep right and um, so they just find themselves like substantially stronger doing very very similar things to reinhardt had you experimented around with cheesing it like tm did with ram no um we we went into the end game thinking our strategy was e- good enough to win like we we really 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 felt like it um and we definitely didn't go into the exo game thinking that we needed to change anything we just like fuck we just need to play better than we did against ents and we'll be okay you know again like our scrim results against exo are one where we didn't feel like we we needed to to cheese or to do like a plan b like we really felt like our plan a but we had two plans we had plan a and plan b but we really felt like both of them were were in a good spot um even now, if you go back, I'd, especially against X, there's no way I'm playing Ram against them, you know? Like, I think I, I just think the comps and stuff we had were okay. We just needed to play them with, like, a little bit more aggression and with, like, yeah. the, the attitude of wanting to win as opposed to not wanting to lose, maybe. One one thing that sucked with me that Gamba said, and maybe I'm hopefully not misquoting, but I, I think he said the established consensus is that Marga is the counter to Ram. Do you agree? Yeah, I think so. I fully agree. I mean, I was in the Twitch chat while everyone was flaming Gumba, and I was like, yeah, you guys are all absolutely dumb. Like, <laughs> um, I think I might have tried to do it slightly differently. Like, I think that instead of playing the same, I think that there was like a Mauga Tracer version, yes. which would have worked. Yeah. Um, but no one had really tried that. But 100%, like, the, the way Mauga's kit is designed to get past, like, heroes that can block headshots, mm-hmm. um, whilst having, like, a really good, consistent way to get, like, behind the ram so we can't block any damage at all. I think the... We actually exist right now in a game of Overwatch where, like, the rock, paper, scissors counter swap is so, 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 so impactful. Like, Arissa loses to ram, probably. Like, I mean, these are all, like, 60-40s. Like, there's no such thing as, like, a hard counter, I think. But, like, I think, like, Mauga beats Ram. Ram beats Arissa. Arissa beats Mauga. And then maybe, like, dive tanks also, like, figure out a way to be in there somewhere. Um, but until the next patch, it feels like that's how it is. I think huh? Gamba also said you guys could have just dived it out and probably won, won on, you know, class and better ability. We, internally, our dive almost never failed across like two months of scrimming like really really high win rate on dive i think um the comp which we struggled the most was 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 a rissa tracer sojin because that was effectively the same comp we're playing but just with a different tank so it felt like when teams played like the mauga comp or the ram comp they play like very very tight so it's quite easy to figure out a way to like dive into it whereas like a team that plays a little bit more, more like wide but with just like a super over tuned horse in the front line i think was like slightly more difficult for us to figure out um, but I think we could have won it on dive. I think for sure we were like the best dive team. Um, and we really, really felt like dive was in a decent place, but not with how we played it. I think. Did Did you watch whack against Falcons? Yeah. Um, I think there, I mean, I have a lot of comments to talk about the career region in general. Um, oh, but huh? yeah, I think those teams how much are, worse are you guys? good. Um, I think that Korea are, are good and they actually have like a pretty good meta reads, but they're also like the coaching or like the strategical element in Korea is really terrible right now. Um, teams are just so mirrored to just like, let's just play the mirror matchup and right, then yeah. just lose 0-3 and go home. Whereas what the EU teams do, I don't, I don't think the NA teams do it either, but like the the EU teams, and this is I think largely because like, I'm not going to say that actually because that's not that's not who I am. Um, but I do think that like the EU coaches in general for the top four teams are very realistic in terms of like we can win or we can't win on this matchup. And right. like even TM, which doesn't have a coach, realized that they couldn't win on what they what they'd scrimmed, which was Mago. So they went to a Plan B. EXO realized they couldn't win the dive mirror, which is what we'd scrimmed. So they went to a Plan B. And um, we had to go to a Plan B. Ents at some point had to push Plan B. Um, all of the EU teams, especially, or at least strategically, are making decisions which allow them to win. Whereas too many times do I see like Genesis just play, oh, it's Hollywood, so we're going to play double flex. It doesn't matter that we're playing against WAC. This is our double flex map and just lose. Um, and without any like attempt to to strategically get their way through the series, you know? Yep. 
So what you're saying is Western coaches are better than Korean coaches right now? At least it's strategy, 100%. Percent. Um, Thank you for maybe the, in terms, the title. Yeah, <laughs> at least in terms of how the comps are played, it's really possible that the Korean coaches are still very good. Um, but there are some decisions I see teams make, and I'm saying you just give your team 0% chance to win this yeah. series um, from day one. Yep. It feels like it, it's such a hard thing to break, and it was obviously like very apparent during like the GOATS era of the game, where everybody was just like, yeah, we're shit at GOATS, but it's all you can play, so I guess we suck. So it's like, we don't want to try to like think about it a little bit. We don't want to try to strat. We don't want to try Sombra. We don't even want to try like the DPS stuff, even though, like, yeah, it's it's also like a catch-22 for the coaches because, like, how are you going to get the players to buy into, like, doing shit that, like, isn't proven you know what i mean like that's always like a really difficult thing that i think like the public doesn't realize is that like you can't this isn't just like some authoritarian government structure most of the time where the coach is just telling the players what to do and you just do it without any questions asked like they have like a lot of input so it's it it's difficult but ultimately that's kind of the the only logical way that you're ever going to find what's going to work for you or find a style or improve i in some sense that you know you have to strap a little bit you know you have to think about the game um and just mirroring i feel like is just every time i watch these games and it's not just korea i feel like it's just overwatch in general um it's it's just like a, a surrender flag pops up every time i just watch mm. a team just like go mirror and it's like is this really the point to do it or could you have changed something with the comp that you were oh. running is Look, there like a chess piece to move, no, a resource no. to change? See, some some people play six pools. Others want to play the macro game and play it honorably, <laughs> okay? Be listen, listen, fun. what I do, what I do and what I think should be done, two very different things. Don't, don't you know, it's it's the age-old parental um, do as I say, not as I do, okay? Like what, what I do and what you do, you know, what should be done, very different things. Like far from be it for me to like pass on an uh, opportunity to say something inflammatory here but i think <laughs> i think okay. the 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 thing is there's a very high chance that if you were like if the regions the best teams were to play tomorrow uh -huh. western regions wouldn't get a map and it would still it would still not mean that chris is incorrect yeah in, of course in that this level of player might just be and the, yeah. the, the fucking, like, distilled crackedness. Like, the, none of these top teams realistically would have been allowed in Overwatch League. Like, we had mm -hmm. super teams, but never to the degree of uh, Falcons, I feel like. Like, sure. every super team you had, you, you still were like, ah, is that guy actually top five? Maybe, maybe not. You know, like, even Atlanta, you would say, like, the tank was, you know not the best player that you could have. I don't think that's true for uh, Titans at all. I think they just like legitimately have top three players in every single position at the moment. And it's still interesting to see that they lost against WAC, but that might just be the breeding ground for Chris's argument to hold true, which is there is something Either it's like an honor thing and a handshake agreement because it, ultimately the game also, in fairness, didn't matter, right? Like both of those guys were qualified. Both of those guys kind of had everything locked in. Um, so maybe they didn't want to necessarily do their best. But mm -hmm. yes, like there's a weird tendency and maybe it's a long-term strategy in terms of like just like holding these str strategies that work and maybe maybe it's the dominant strategy. But yeah, I'll I'll let Chris defend that take here. No, I I don't know. I also think I'm obviously biased, but I really think the EU teams will play the Korean teams way closer than you think. Really, yeah. way closer than you think. Um, I don't know. I I don't experience it. So maybe when we eventually get to these lands, if if I'm lucky enough to qualify for them, <laughs> um. Obviously, it's really stupid for me to come here and talk shit about Korean teams when I can't, can't even break top four Europe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. Know. I, I I look at them and I think like, would a team like Ents with Gumba like, are they gonna just mirror 
like Falcons dive, or are they going to make Falcons earn the win? And I don't know, like the same way that we knocked out Atlanta, man, by Mm -hmm. doing the same thing, by making them like beat our version of a cup, you know, like team career at the World Cup. Like if you want to tell me, oh, like Sparkle wasn't as good as who they could have got. Yeah, fair enough. But Rush and the team career, they have misread the meta so hard that all doing that tournament was just mirror china like again like atlanta just mirrored spark team korea just mirrors china on the only comp which china can play and they play at like just an unbelievable level then team korea went and played finland and just mirrored the sigma comp and it's like ah fuck you guys are like so like far behind like on a strategic level that you're just doing what ironically what we had to do against exo which is just we missed it so much that we just had to mirror and hope we could outskill you know um but I think coaching, I think largely through how Gumba won this season, I think yeah. I would like to give myself some credit for like being one of the first coaches like on London to kind of like do against the grain, like consistently like go against the meta. Um, I think that more and more Overwatch has been shown that if you have like a smart strategic mind, you don't have to play like the five heroes that everyone plays and just hope that you play them better than the opponents. Like there is a way to win via throwing them off or countering or swapping or, or something like that, you know? Yeah. Nope. I think what, what we are observing is just maybe a, a comfort zone because like that level of just like honing one comp is just so ingrained in that community and like was so fit for so long in Overwatch League, right? Like sure. And that's also where a lot of these players have their roots and it's probably something that they feel comfortable on. Um but yeah, I genuinely just don't. Once again, like it, it, I'm just like warning against. Yes, you will. You might get punched in the mouth at international events, but the criticism towards this monoculture, and it's not everyone in this region. I will also say, like on the day that they mirrored Winston dives, there were a bunch of teams playing Orisa. There were a bunch of teams playing Wonga. Right? Yeah. Like it's, um, but specifically like. F- for these big teams, maybe maybe it's a it's a feature of that game not ma- ultimately not mattering. But like yes, historically, like I, f- I feel like Chris has a point in terms of handshaking into this weird honor matchup where right. Nope. Uh, yep. And maybe it's an ego thing. Maybe it's a, like a a uh, perception thing. But uh, but the, at the end of the day, it's about winning games. And if you gamble a, an Overwatch League. Uh, championship away doing so that's that's on you right i i'm sure i watched it the other week and it was like genesis who like had like one win and needed to win versus whack and i remember they played the same comp on map one and map two was hollywood and i just remember both teams do this thing which like i felt like all the korean teams were doing at that moment where they just subbed in kalios and they just play bap brig mirror because hollywood is a bap brig map in korea um and i just remember watching it and i'm like like you're playing against Wack, who like on double flex, like yeah. Churong Shu is like so hard to beat. Um, maybe it was a different team than Genesis. I'm sure it was like recently, but uh, there was some game that was, and I just remember like, ugh, like, what chance do you have to win if you just like you go in from from like day one and just mirror like what's clearly the best double flex team that's been playing yeah. double flex since day one? And yeah, I don't know. I just look at that and I think you just give yourself no chance here. It feels like the same shit, it, and not to get completely like, not to date myself completely, but you know, like when you look at like, especially older like StarCraft Two history, where it's like the Koreans are gonna come over, you're not gonna beat them in a macro game, you're not gonna go the distance and just have as good a hands as them. So you have to, yeah, like you're saying, you have to find a way to win. Like if you want to advance past this person, and you know, like you be, you know, reasonable with yourself, you're, you know, not gonna be as good as them at these things or that thing or you know microing here or you know macroing there so how you know i'm not saying that everybody needs to you know get on their cheese pants and you know get down to the farmer's market and get some gouda but like let's think a little bit you know like they, i feel like this game is so rife to have so many interesting little like swaps and like stylist things and i thought that was what was so beautiful last year and not to completely glaze you but like with your team and like what obviously what mayhem did i feel like all season they were so like particular about like the different little looks they would play like ryan on like numbani a and like what the fuck are you doing that but it kind of worked and like there was thought behind it and like that's what i feel like is like fun about overwatch 
but so often it just gets down to like the same boring ass shit one team is ahead of the meta like you said the other team's a little bit behind they just go well i don't know we'll just mirror it and then you just get a mirror match where like one team's obviously just a little bit more comfortable the other team's kind of picking it up and you just lose yeah no i agree i think that one thing that came to mind with them all of the mauga controversy like four seconds into him being picked into a competitive game was everyone's like oh it's so yeah. boring but i feel somewhere that like the true like i actually think that anyone who thinks like arissa is exciting and mauga oh, is God. boring <laughs> i think you just that's the same like, yeah it's the same if you think like oh good thing it's a ram mirror and not a mag like i think they're just like tweeting for interactions because they yeah. know the community wants to negatively like talk about mauga but i feel like what's exciting about overwatch is nine times out of ten not the same five heroes on both teams you oh, know yeah. and and if hero bands or something does come down the line i think that at least that might solve that problem because you know, i love these people that like sit on twitter and like smell their own thoughts and talk about how <laughs> oh, i love watching doomfist echo like it's so exciting watching these heroes but fuck me try and watch that comp it's so oh, hard yeah. like everybody's team peeing over oh look at the I'm gonna. We're gonna have Jake on the podcast hopefully soon, and I'm gonna argue with him about this because he's one of these people who oh, I just want to like pop off heroes. It's the best for the game, and I'm like, ah, oh, like this idea that like all these like pop off heroes like make the game so enjoyable. Oh, Sojourn Tracer again. Yes, I haven't seen that for like the last <laughs> 17 years. You know, like I think w- when Overwatch is at its best is I found the grand finals of TM versus Ents incredibly engaging because there was clearly a strategical battle going on there where tm tried something new the second map ends realized the counter they tried the counter does gumba stick for map three with the counter because the map was close or does he try and then there was like this like level up of both teams then at some point then Gumba says, okay, we got it. We got a mirror. And then they mirror. The TM go for the mirror. On the attack, all of a sudden, TM now play the Mauga to counter the Ram. And there is this actual like strategic battle where two teams are swapping heroes. And I think, okay, that to me, there is storylines there. The, the, the desk and the casters must love that too because all of a sudden, fuck, I've got something to talk about on the desk afterwards. I don't just have to talk about... Yo, what an insane performance from Proper. Did you see all those headshots he hit? Like, whoa, whoa look at that. He's like, really okay, on it no. today, boys. Yeah, it's actually yeah. like, oh, there was a decision here to mirror this comp, which maybe Gumba shouldn't have put Kev on Sim, even though there was like there was a reason to do it, you know? Sure, of course. And I think that's where Overwatch is at its best. Um, and I think that like we should stop. I really want us to stop this kind of uh, like hero racism, you know, where it's like, oh, this is one of the the ugly, boring heroes, and this is one of the I love these heroes. Like, these yeah. are the acceptable heroes to be meta for the seventh year in a row. Um, and I want variety. Like I want to like I want Maga comp to be good for a while. I want like different heroes that we don't see to be good for different periods of time, and just to kind of like keep it changing, you know. Hmm. I think I I think that that is probably the most entertaining Overwatch. I get what like what with what Jake's saying, and I th- I feel like you know it's it's very obvious that like you know having high skill impact heroes is like fun for the viewer. They get obvious you know cues when they should be excited. It's cool when people pop off, but it's just like not. It's very messy. It's hard to watch. Like yeah, cool. Like I'm watching Chase pop up on Doomfist, and it's like you know okay great. Like what else is happening? I can't really conceptualize the fight so much and maybe that's like a broadcast criticism but yeah i i I think okay watch me be the centrist andy but i think like you need both um i think the strategic aspect and whatnot is cool down for those that love the pop-off heroes and then you have the pop-off metas where it's the cool down for those that love the strategic aspect because personally, dude, I loved watching uh, Proud against Profit on uh, Widow Duels um, when when those guys faced off. Probably the like maybe not the best, but yeah, well, maybe they sure. might be the best Fun. in the uh, in the um, region at the moment. But I-, I think that's also part of Overwatch the the individual stories that you tell. Yeah. But you also can tell t- team stories and. In in general, like you you have a demand of novelty, right? That you want to mm-hmm. sort of mit, hit, and like alternating these types of narratives, even told through the gameplay, is probably a good way to protect against fatigue. 
Only yeah, I, I feel... Yeah, go on. Sorry. Like, you probably loved the Widow Jewel because, like, Widow is not seen very much, right? Yes. Whereas, I can't imagine when you were watching Timeless versus M80 and we had two arrestors and two tracers and two surgeons and it was, like, surgeon versus um, Pelican or whoever, the uh, Hydron, right, who was playing yeah. it. I I can't imagine, like, I feel like people are, like, slightly dishonest about it. Maybe it's because I just have such a warped perspective because I'm a coach, so yes. what a surprise. The coach likes yep. Str- yep. strategy over pop-off, right? But I just can't imagine for, like, the second year in a row watching two surgeons just trade, oh, I've headshot him, now he's yeah, headshot yeah. me, yep. back and forth. <laughs> I, I just don't believe it actually changes people's heart rates, you know? You know what it's like? You, you ever been to an art exhibit? in the museum yes. and you you go and, with yep. people and they're like oh i just love the colors here you can see what it is it's all cap nobody actually believes that it's fully yep. lying and i think that's what overwatch is when people say oh i love tracer sojourn again when you've oh, seen it so right. many times when when a tracer hits a pulse bomb i honestly don't believe that people's heart rate changes it's just they're like watching like the van gogh photo and like oh it's magnificent it's another, i've been told it's pretty. Post bomb. look how yep. good i am yep. i love that's what i believe you know and, no, but and maybe... you're the artist that's the thing you're the artist at the museum and you're oh look at the texture and i wonder how like oh the, look, but the like how did they do this and like Chris, you're 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 the artist it's it's kind of like porn okay like you get <laughs> like if if you don't have enough cooldown you you need more extreme shit and then eventually like i i just need to see i don't know like stalker pulse bomb a tracer after the third blink okay that's that's the shit that gets me off but i don't know if there's much after that right like i'm feeling like we i gotta switch genres at some point and and i agree like um but then again i could also not see just like you know fucking ryan mirrors just bashing into each other for forever again right like but that's it. But this is the point. What what you're saying is, you would hate to watch a Ryan Mirror for an extended period of time, and you would hate to see this. And what I'm saying is, you're right. But why, if it's Mauga Mirror? And by the way, Avril yeah. was tweeting. Avril on the establishment, he was tweeting <laughs> that Mauga was boring. Thirty seconds into the first round of him being played, and that was enough for him to 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 tweet that thirty seconds was all it took. You know, and it's like, I fuck. Like surely. Mauga would be boring if we Space. watched it for months. <laughs> yeah, if, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Why is Tracer Sojourn for like the second yep. year, like since Sojourn? Why is that just acceptable to be? Why is that not boring to people? Because fuck, I've seen I've seen Sojourn medals before. Both teams have to play. Please don't peek the rail. Please yep. don't peek the yep. rail. And the better Sojourn wins the series. It <laughs> happened in Playoffs 22. It happened in Junker Queen meta. It, yep. All of these metas, that's just what happened, you know? Um, and I, I don't know. Like which, I feel like it, 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 at some point, I would just love variety, you know? Which, like you some of the that, ugly heroes. Would you say the same thing if you had gotten Kai Kefster? I could be biased because I... I mean, I have a really good Sojourn <laughs> Tracer player. Yeah. And, but... I don't know, like, I feel like it's when okay, I, I remember there was just there was just like one moment I was watching the M80 game and it was just two Arissas and two Surgeons yeah. and it was Coliseo first fight and I'm thinking nobody's going to tweet about how fucking bo- no one's going to tweet about how boring this is but when my mate Mauge, who by the way, a hot take, takes way more skill than Arissa and Ram, 100% fact if you understand yeah. the game Yes, yeah Everyone tweets about how shit Malga is, and people just watch two Arissas spin each other in the Coliseum while wait, waiting for the Sojourn to hit a headshot and pretend that this is enjoyable. That's what I think. Look, I think you like the way I perceive the discourse around the M80 episode uh, game was really episode, yes. Was really not like going like, oh, the Sojourn. It was more like, ha ha. Hydron is getting shit on. <laughs> yeah, because Hydron is one of those rare players that decided to have a personality in the esports uh, yep, of Overwatch yep, and yep. unfortunately fell victim Rare to the say, fact yep. that these really, really nice people uh, in the Overwatch community are actually quite fucking horrible. Look, but like, once again, I will say that you kind of need that guy like to be hated. And, like, he just has to play through it. I know it's like not yeah, fair. Yeah, but, like, I know. I know. It's, it just you kind of feel like there is this like causation of when if like you see hydron i don't even know what hydron did to get so much hate i feel like he just like it just has like a bit of personality i don't know yeah. there must have been a moment that i've missed that he think, did to turn the world against him i think it's as soon as like one 
every carry uh, AD uh, or almost every carry DPS player has an ego, mm. right? It's like yeah. if you go into the fucking angle and challenge someone and you don't think you're the best player in the world, you're playing the fucking game wrong, okay? Everyone yeah. in every FPS title forever will tell you exactly that. So, of course, someone that wants to compete at the top and, l like, has proven to some degree, at least at some level, yeah. especially because he, he went through that period of, like, just owning for years in contenders, like, of course, there's a bit of ego and that bit of ego is fun as well. Like, I, I fucking hate... I, I hope it doesn't happen, but because it sounded like he's retiring uh, on his stream. Um, I hope he doesn't let that shit get to him too much. Like, he should just fucking play through that shit and then come back and just slap, right? Like, yeah. it's... But that's also... And that's also where I have to put the, the blame a little bit on the player, uh, players and coaches. Part of sports is having, like, you know, a punching bag. You gotta have one, right? And yeah, like sometimes it's you, and then it sucks. But you gotta play through it, right? It's part of the experience. Like it's it's also you. I think the mental model that always helped me when when that happens, when OG tries to cancel my career, is like I I have to realize that these are guys. This is this the equivalent of guys in the pub watching an England game getting drunk and chatting shit and saying like, oh, it's so obvious. What the fuck? How did but, we not? Like, that's the that's level of discourse, right? Yeah, mm. I always think like, imagine if Cristiano Ronaldo went home after a loss and read his Twitter replies, you know, like it would be way <laughs> worse than anything Hydran does. But I think at a level of sports, there is this yeah. understanding that we need the passionate fans to drive the game, but passionate fans are also unbelievably stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And like, it, yes. We like rely on them, but also we really, really hate them. And stand um, and it feels like the way that esports works is it feels like like the level of disconnect from me at the pub and Cristiano Ronaldo is there's a big enough distance. But it feels like right. if you're a yes. Reddit commenter or Twitter, you're just about close enough to where you can actually yeah. like. like Heard you I remember reading. I, I had an incident over one of my Twitter followings many years ago. Maybe you remember <laughs> such an incident. <laughs> And I remember comments on Reddit threads that were like, Christopher is a known misogynist. Christopher is a known racist. Like, Christopher is a known horrible person. And I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, it's like, it's so close. Like, this person, like, uh -huh. this isn't, like, this is like an actual human being in theory that's like, <laughs> that's, that's writing this stuff about me. And it's like, it's so hard to not let, like, that get in because i'm like well i didn't do anything i just mm -hmm. I, I haven't done like I, no well, one has had a bad interaction with me but i'm like known as an evil person um look and, and there's, i feel like there's a cut title yeah. the creator meme here, in here right like just walk away but i will say the percentage of ownership level yes. people oh, that it. read yes. that shit was fucking yes. psychotic okay yep like it, it, you could not ignore the discourse because you're the guy that pays your salary probably read that shit. I, I'm not sure if that's yeah. too true for the uh, for the teams that you were in, but that were definitely like yeah. even the unlikely owner reading that shit and going like, "Hmm, is my coach smart by not playing what the what the redditor <laughs> says they should be playing?" Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's wild that like that there was legitimate impact. I, I also for a while and. Then I just turned into an apathetic bad person. But like for a while, I, tr I was in the trenches and catching fucking like uh, trying to to die on hills and whatnot it, because I knew like some guys just Sorry, reading that shit. Are. And then nah, it's it's not as bad anymore. Not like, as bad. No, that's that's very fair. You have improved. There has been some character growth. That's fair. The the amount of like messages I throw away and just say, uh, you know, they deserve each other. I had one. I had one in my. Uh, it's still in my drafts. It was like uh, ah. like this latest element of like awkward drama. I was I was so close to just sending it, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you just gotta write just, it out. You just gotta get just, it, get it out of the head. Just don't do it. Nope. Yeah, it's not worth it. But but then again, like it's it is, it feels important to be able to separate the public persona the the gestalt, if you want, of what everyone else thinks you are and what you actually are, right? No. And yes, the, 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 that distance is uncomfortably 
close, especially like if you're streaming and you're giving a lot of weight from you and like maybe they see your mom coming in, giving you your attendees and whatnot. Like it, it just feels a little, it feels a little bit more personal, but yeah, it does. It's, it's still like there's a, there's a healthy distance and in some way there's some parasocial aspect. And I will also say sometimes you just gotta, gotta look at your own like behavior and actually sometimes they have a point right like sometimes yeah, you actually yeah. did, did some shit and you gotta like not some, me sometimes reconsider not me <laughs> some some <laughs> points um and i t personally have definitely taken that uh to account especially like um when it comes to giving away too much information in petty i i get frustrated if i'm in an argument where i know i'm right but the reason I know I'm right is because of internal information that I cannot disclose feasibly. Right. Because yeah. I also do not have the... I have knowledge enough to believe that it's true. I do not have yeah. report that out knowledge of that factor, right? It would need way more almost scientific knowledge of that, right? And I think I got better and had to necessarily just like realize, yeah, they have a point. Like they, they are arguing I actually not that stupidly with me. Um, they cannot know, right? Given what they know, their point yeah, yeah. Like there, there is a knowledge gap there that has to be considered. And yes, I know it hurts that a you cannot say it, and b they do not realize that there is one. But like sometimes it's, it's honestly like actually relatively sane people arguing a good point with the information that they have. Hmm. But sometimes, dude. Sometimes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, what did I see today? Let me let me think about this. Something about the World Cup. Oh, you guys being higher ranked than uh, other teams in some Elo model because you actually had a really hard strength of schedule uh, throughout your events. So therefore, you're the fourth place team, but you're ahead in Elo uh, uh, of the third place teams in both other Western regions. It's like, oh, this is biased. Hmm. No, this is math. <laughs> 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 you you guys played some some heavy hitters, right? Like on your way there. I mean, we also we played. That was the third time we played Exo, and we beat them the first two. So like that was like right. Uh, they obviously won uh, won when it matters, but it wasn't like the first time that we that we'd had to play them. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it, it, yeah that's another thing. Like that that you we we will never get it into American heads that. Uh, oh, you know, like just going deep in a playoff event does not actually oh, say yeah, that true. much about the, you know, the how the entire year went. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I feel like that's just like that's something that I, I hope we get in Overwatch, but I, I feel like I appreciate a lot in like a lot of other esports is that like you applaud like top eight finishes, you know, like finding some kind of like arbitrary like yeah you didn't win the the ring they didn't get the chip. But like they're really good, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I, I, I think we severely underrate like the difficulty and the like esteem of like hitting a podium. Like that's that's something to be applauded. It's not as big, but like that's something really, really I, good um, and should be appreciated. I think it's not enough uh, competitions just yet. If you get Fair, one or yeah. two more, I think we can feasibly think about getting something like a rating system going for Overwatch as well, yeah. where we aggregate and like you know like this is this hltv rating for cs having something like that for overwatch getting a, like a smart uh excel wizard on the elo calculations of that and it'll and never it, be perfect but it'll be it'll, something that we can latch on to you know it, it'll be easier too now that this like face it league is out because yeah. i think that is going to be like a lot of games every week so you're actually going to get like very very like between owcs and the face it league it feels like you're going to have some weeks you're gonna have like as many as like three or four games. Like you, right. there's gonna be like a lot of like these teams playing against each other. So I think you can probably build quite a good like system that'll help with that. Is that too much competition? Nope. Based. You you see think... no burnout risk or anything? Nope, not at all. One hundred percent not. Um, the way that the format works right now is the Swiss stage is almost not a competition for the good teams anyway because yeah. like an eight out of the nine games you're just like. I think Unter put it like clubbing on gold players, I think is what he said. <laughs> um, and then largely the groups 
there will at some point the, the way the Swiss stage will go is it'll make a group of death like by default, but so far sure. the groups have been quite easy for everyone to get out of. Um, so realistically, you only get one weekend uh, where you get like the really big game. So I actually think having other games in and around that is really, really fine. Yeah. Okay. That... I mean, yeah. Go on. Ultimately, with with the, with in regards to the Swiss stages, as we you know maybe even look to next year, maybe as far as I don't know if this is something in the rulebook that's been established, but surely they don't just make you club on a bunch of golds every stage right like they're just like oh no i i think you I, i'm you pretty sure we, we yeah i think so that's nuts I wait for owcs or for uh for facebook? owcs yes yeah OWCS, do you just have yeah. to repeat the swiss every that i think that's a little silly i feel like i i assume that this was like establishing like the hierarchy of things and then going into either next stage or maybe even next year like you wouldn't have to sit there and go through the Swiss again. Like you would just like the I don't, top I don't mind. Like, I don't mind. Okay. The, the Swiss, the Swiss stage, you're gonna get at least one or two. Like we had, we played against EXO and Ents in the Swiss stage, so we got like two good games. Yeah. I think it's good practice. It's like good to play against them. Um, I think you know, the open system is one which is objectively good, and I think with an open system comes having to prove yourself. Yeah, yeah, on or. Fair so point. I think the system is okay. All right. By the way, clubbing okay. goals is like a fun expression, especially because, yeah. like after oh. after Dante left Gladiators, it's sort of like what what Gladiators became, right? And like every time you kill G Yakiel, a couple of gold points, <laughs> your coins yeah. popped out up from his inflated salary. Yaki Somehow, mentioned. how did the yeah, how did the the in joke from Uncoachables bleed over here? You just you just brought the the luggage with you. Are we doing a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, look i i theoretically have the receipts for a client of the week oh, oh. oh i love it <laughs> i i don't know how, how to let me let me send uh let me send you the screenshot you tell me if it's <laughs> kosher to do that um let me work Listen, on that client of the week you just gotta you gotta unleash yourself you know you always feel guilty doing it but once you've made a few people clients i think it's it's good you know <laughs> well you wouldn't like that you're the client in that case Yikes. oh shit well then do it do it of course do it <laughs> yeah the problem is okay <laughs> um wait let me let me send this to you while i'm possibly content cuck everyone still Oof. listening Audio listeners, he's you remember that one? broken. He's squeezing his hog right now, live on stream. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got it wrong. Like yeah, I mean, you could do that one. Like for sure, it's okay. Like, okay. Yeah, I get it wrong all the time. So, do you want me to do it now, or should we end it, do it in the end, Joe? Yeah, we're basically ending now. We can we can tail it. All right, let me let me figure out how to, how I get this on my screen. Like uh, tech lunch? wizardry. Here we go. Wait, he's doing it live. Wait, let me okay we're doing this and then why? audio listeners he's squeezing his hog again how do i oh that's <laughs> really good that i i love that i'm painting the picture that you could be doing something unscrupulous and you're just like confused on how your own body works it, the problem is that my that this uh <laughs> fucking program doesn't recognize the the tool that i use for it so just read to... it no you gotta see it yeah you know? oh my god so wait can i do this with this way all right well yes fumbles with his own penis um chris what do you think about venture is is do you think there are any good do you think that it's like hard, too hard to tell it is kind of weird it feels like it's like unplayable on vertical maps Nah, it'll be uh they'll be op uh 100 um that's what happens like we've we've entered into the power creep era of overwatch um, okay fair. and minus a life weaver or two i think every hero that comes out Just nine times out of busted. ten is is pretty good um so i think venture will will be the same huh i i like the idea that they're giving them like assisted like survivability with like the um the added like quick melee damage and like the shields that they get I just feel like on like, granted, you know, some maps aren't just going to be in the map pool, but I feel like there's just some some maps that ventures just can't work on. They feel yeah. too close range, and they feel like they don't have any vertical mobility that they just kind of like get stuck behind a shield and 
they yeah no, I, I saw some know. people today on twitter like talking about oh, the, the heroes made it's obvious and it's like oh. yeah so you know the numbers like predicting a hero is yeah. like so unbelievably it pointless is a moot yeah yeah it, just know it. they'll be op that's all you need to know <laughs> Abuse him. I got it. I got it. I am boomer. Always got it. Sh- should I? Should I show? Yeah. Yes. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Unveil it. I'm full screening. So <laughs> this wasn't even the first time, or remotely the first time, we talked about your organization. But <laughs> Chris forgot what his orchestra, <laughs> despite <laughs> being on his jumper. Like, based. Yeah. I literally went around for the first two weeks, like telling my mom that I'm like on on Starship Gaming, like, and I think it was another one where I was like, uh, like, Star Station or like Spaceship Spaceship Gaming. Like, it actually took me so long to remember which uh, which two S letters went into the organization. Um, I think my, at one point my mom said to me, "Wait." Is it Starship or Space Station? Who did he sign for? And she was Googling Starship Gaming, which I think oh, also no. exists in some way or another. Um, and so, yeah, I, thankfully they gave us like a, they gave us it on the hoodie. So, uh, <laughs> and I, I just never never can forget anymore. Yeah. Space Nation. We never did a Space Nation. No. I feel no, like that's I, never, no, I always knew it was huh? was the double S, but I mean Starship Space Station is kind of the same thing. Yeah, I mean SSG, you, see, you know, it's it's it fits yeah. the acronym. You can see where I went wrong. Yeah, but yeah. I'm happy to claim client of the week. I think you know I've had it come in. <laughs> do, do do you have a a subject already planned out for uncoachable? You don't have to say, but like how 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 long do you plan? Do you have bookmarks? Do you keep logs? Um, you mean for for what? Well, for just the next episode? Yeah. 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 We're filming tomorrow morning, so hopefully, it's been Content so. Back it's on actually, the menu. It's so difficult to book a uh, European, yes. Australian, and someone from the West Coast. <laughs> Preach, brother. Preach, brother. When, when everyone truth, is working yeah. full time jobs, it's unbelievably difficult. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna try and get two in this week if we can, so that we can kind of like, cause like. It's like a less intense week. There's no like games and stuff. Um, yeah, right. My, I think I'm gonna like the tweet that I was gonna do. I'm gonna do it in client of the week. So I'm gonna like try to really start start some more drama there. So get ready for that. Nice. Um, and I think yeah, tomorrow's episode is a good one. I think the one after will also. I think we got some. The good thing about taking a lot of time is I think you get like a lot of topics. So I think both are gonna yeah. be some really solid episodes. Can you say oh. the guess? Um, when does this one release? Tomorrow. Be up probably tomorrow yeah um i think the plan is to do gumba tomorrow um mm. and then hopefully we're gonna get jake on if we can mm. and then jake can like defend like he can be the voice of the establishment you know where, where are you with gumba right now like i know you hated him in the past you you really got into it hated him and then you kind of made this awkward, no, like, I like him now. Like, uh, oh really i think we have like this like Sometimes with the way Gumba is, I see him and I think he's playing me. Like he'll like talk to me about like strategies and stuff, and I'm like, nah, nah, this fuck is like playing me, you know. Um, but I think more or less, uh, we're on good terms. I think that we're like we we talk quite a bit. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes you see like this like like this side of him like that, that he's also like this like delusional like people like the rest of us. You know. Sometimes I build Gumba up in my head as like this like psychopathic genius but then sometimes i'm like he was on like the co at the x's co-stream and he was like talking about how oh when when ssg beat us in a in a scrim it was like mickey mouse it was kappa they just played dive maps of course they won and i checked it and it's like it was like king's row and lijang were the maps who beat them on and it's like oh yeah like gumba is also like delusional in terms of like he um he gaslights himself into thinking oh we lost this scrim but it didn't matter the same way that every other coach does yeah. so i didn't see the human side of him but i think no i i like the guy now it's, i i see like the social engineering that he does on you in order for you to feel not negatively against him after he three or stomped you guys is is s tier that's it yeah um i'll, I'll get him next time <laughs> <laughs> Well, well said. What, what do well you think? Said. What do you think about his move to basically, like, once again, like, it's it's not even that he just shoots his own players behind the barn. He now takes out entire teams and buries him deep. True. And, and actually, I you just, guys I, actually benefit from that. You're currently ahead in points. I think. If uh, I think. Yeah. They, they, no, they have. No. They do have. Uh, 
I think they played their two DPS play or three DPS but, players, all of them, so they all got points. But yeah, eventually it won't matter, yeah. But I think that like I think we're still ahead of them because unless Cookie or Shockwave play tank, their core roster is not gonna have those players in. So I think the way that Correct. the core roster stuff works means that I think we are ahead of them. Um I mean, it's just like, it's absolute classic Gumba, you know? Like, that's just like, it, like, he just, like, he just is what he is, you know? Like, he literally messaged me, like, five minutes after he got knocked out of the TM game, asking me when we're scrimming again, you know? Like, they're like the meme about, like, the second things are over, he books scrims. He, it's actually, like, what he does. Um, and I think that, like, yeah, for, for me, like, there is clearly a way to manipulate. Like, it does feel like, imagine if Toronto decided that they thought what Timeless was doing was good. They could just steal two players and just yeah. kill Timeless, like, in the streets. And there's, like, nothing anyone could do about it. Um, and it feels like the, the people that are going to do that will will be Gumba, you know. And I expect when he can, he's going to look to, like, make those moves more often. It's almost like, I feel like it's funny, you know, because, like, Team Finland, like, the Cloudy Vest Ghost Massa, they're, they're chickens, you know, and Gumba is a fox, and he, they thought, let's get the fox in the hen house and let's have some fun, but slowly Gumba's just killing them one by one, you know. Ghost, benched, Sauna, off the team, Vess, now kicked too. Like, those poor Finnish guys, they, they got him in, and he just slowly, bit by bit, clubbed them to death, you know. Um, so, you know, they might have got second players, but the power Time for, of friendship. for a new mutiny. One might say. Yeah, well, that's it. Like at some point, if, they're, if they're tight and there's like the org is finished, you, you never know. Like <laughs> there's only so much trust they can have it in a guy that's consistently killing your best friends. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as you win. Yeah. yeah, that's it. But they have one fourth place team and he's, and yeah, and everyone's like on the bench all of the yeah, Who are you going to celebrate and, the win with? You know? I don't and know. then the, the Finnish org is going to be like, oh, why are we doing this? Then, then we'll see, you know. Sully, no, it's a... Sully Kalex is your main support going to e EWC with you instead of Massa, you know? You never know. Yeah, that's it. I'm just glad that we've got contracts, you know, so that the we've got the, the gates bolted up so when the fox comes sniffing, he can't get in. <laughs> I, I think he will, like, probably just, like, take take everyone else out right like it's I, I you better hope some other organization soon comes in in order to shut this down with contracts because otherwise like but but i get it like if, if it serves a functional purpose in their case um, well it's like a they upgrade the roster in a yeah. way and at least and they take out some potential competition along the way like it yeah. feels hard to blame him you know He's have playing you, the rules. Have you thought about doing anything like this? Maybe because you need someone in any position or something? Um, the only thing I think is that if, if there is a world where hero bands come in, I think that I want to be quick to jump on certain players like to, to keep our roster. Like I feel like they're like like that second flex support in Europe, if it's yeah. like Gala or or whoever it is, I think they become really, really like everyone wants to jump on them if like hero bands becomes a thing. Um well, based on what information do you say that? I don't know. Like I, I just the the dev said it. Like, right. do you not? Do you said something? No, you said something on one of your podcasts. I, I or think something. I think it's like it's it's definitely talked about, right? Like that being a thing. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about public figures saying something publicly about that at an interesting time in the game. Yeah. Um. I think it will be interesting what kind of system will be applied. I think it's... I, what, what kind of system would you prefer? Would you prefer to start heavy-handed and then dial back or start slow and then ramp up? Yeah. Me, 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 me and my mate Gumba were theorycrafting it like literally last night. Um, and it actually feels like Hero Bands is like so fundamentally flawed in terms of... The first problem they've got is the Lucio problem, where it's like if you ban Lucio, you also ban like seven other Zombie heroes. Out, like, yep. yeah. Um, and it feels like if you do a system where you're allowed to ban three heroes, I think I can, if I ban like Lucio, Tracer, Winston, I think you can't play Dive and I think you can't play Brawl. So actually, what you're just going to get is like some sort of like Bap Zen or Bat Break, like Sigma Mirror, like consistently, like these like undiveable comps. So. I don't know if the best way to do it is to do it where if you ban someone, the next map they can't be banned again. So you can't like 
you can't ban for the series, you ban for the map. I don't know if the best is to just give teams one ban. I don't know if there is a system where if you ban a hero, like the other team also has to mirror the ban. Like, oh, I, you can't play Lucio, but we can unless you ban it. But then I also feel like Lucio is just like, I feel the problem is in every single situation I see hero bans, I see Lucio getting through zero times. Like there is yeah, no yeah. more value for money ban than Lucio because of what he also takes out. Um, and I also think that fundamentally, like if you, the only dive tank is Doomfist, I think Doomfist is too easy to counter by like a variety. Like you can't ban hit scan heroes because there's like six of them. You can't really ban like Ana, Bap, Zen because like they all kind of will function function similarly. Like even though they're clearly different heroes, they'll function similar like similarly in the archetype. So you can't ban them. But you take out Lucio and then you take out Winston and I think you take out Tracer and then I, I think dive is impossible and I think brawl is impossible so i think either we need to do something where you like unironically make lucio unbannable which would feel so weird like it's yeah. like you can't really see a system where one hero is like gets like priority um or i, I don't know we were trying to figure it out and it actually feels like every version just ends up like people playing like slow sigma comps or yep. something you have you end up just playing like weird poke mirrors because every all of the actually broken heroes that nobody's act has ever actually pointed a finger at are finally being addressed and you have to fundamentally think about the game so different yeah i think what you would want is you'd want a support to come out immediately that is lucio adjacent that also has some form of speed boost you know um, and if you do that, then I think that you can make like it would make Lucio yeah. less of a valuable ban, which would actually like mean that you would like go after specific specific like characters like that other teams can play. Um, but it doesn't feel like at the pro level the game is balanced or designed in the way that I could see hero bans being like as successful as people would maybe imagine they would be. Yeah, it just evolves into some I mean... real strange shit we are now in a a godless world where the developer doesn't have that much godly powers right you can oh. just say as a tournament organizer we don't let you ban Lucio. because it just feels weird yeah, right just a real it just weird feels thing so sell. like aesthetically weird i think yeah, right. but you could do it if that's what if that's what we wanted you, you could um, also say like you have one ban protection and then the hate and shake agreement is that Lucy everybody picked. just protects Lucio. Yeah. Yeah, there th could be like a Yeah, like the protection thing like could work. Like both teams get to protect like two heroes, but then I don't know, like the bands I don't know. Like I'm open to it. Really, 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 really open to it. Like I think one thing I like about like the new dev team is it does feel like with like the season nine changes they're willing to do stuff. Yeah. Um, agree, yeah. And you know, um the same community was like this patch is fucking terrible and everyone played at it and it was like oh this is actually really good like feels really good for everyone like i don't see anyone complaining about season nine ever anymore i saw when the patch notes came out everyone was really really upset about it um so i think they are willing to change the game like i said like i think in my opinion everyone has this idea of like fun overwatch in terms of the pros my feeling is that less mirror matchups are like the only tangible thing that we can look to walk towards that actually improves fun, you know? I think that well it's only have pop off heroes is doesn't make it fun, I think. Nope. Like the only thing is like to add like a strategical element, but I haven't figured out a way in my head for that to, to make sense so far. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, whatever it's happens awesome. on the server is not nearly as uh, important as the stories that are told outside of it and the drama that's created there. And I think, yep. like, I was part... I, I made my start in esports content creation, World of Warcraft. Nobody fucking understood this game. God, no. Okay? I still remember making an ass out of myself, sitting next to the Dignitas order, owner, Odie, being, I think at the time we were top five in Europe, um in in terms of ladder play we did play an iem i looked at what was happening told odie oh yeah your team is winning and like 20 seconds later they lost the series like i did i had no like the the, the it was just impossible to to really foretell 
but the fucking viewership was cracking for the time. And why? Because like some weirdo had a blog where he like drama farmed the shit out of it, likening the um the pro players to Naruto characters. Actually, made a really compelling story. Had like players hate him. That that's that's another thing. Like. I think there's a lot of value in like externalizing the person to hate from players as well. Like if you just have like a, you know, Skip Bayless in your scene as well. Um, yeah, but, but the uncoachables. <laughs> <laughs> now you're too sort of likable still. Like you, I think you, you would have to turn it up a notch. Uh, I think Gumba has a chance. I think yeah. he's on his way there. Um, he's he's one fan favorite. Uh, favorites uh career being destroyed away from from it getting there i think um but yeah i think the stories that we tell us are way more important realistically than the gameplay and if we're being honest this game has a pr problem have, have yeah. you ever okay i'm i'm going to i'm going to use it joe i i did i have to have you ever heard about the thermocline effect oh jesus obviously not <laughs> okay but basically like uh, I'm not going to explain the physics idea, but like the social thermocline effect is imagine you have a product that gets incrementally a little bit worse for the consumer. And it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. And then eventually there's one change that just like breaks the camel's back. And the owner says, okay, you don't like that change. And everyone's leaving and whatnot, right? And the owner says, okay, we, we notice like this. The change is not good, we're switching it back. It's over. The dams have fallen. Everything is fucked. Your view viewer base has gained momentum in leaving your shit behind. Even if you put you, you cannot put the genie back in the bottle. And I think for a lot of it, that has been Overwatch. Because objectively speaking, this product is better than it was um at after I would say even in a relative sense ever since it's the best state since 2018 i would say right mm -hmm. you could you could argue that you mean the game or the esport the game it's specifically right and then the yes, esport this the esport is attacked uh, attached to that at the hip in some way in the perception of like what what esports e looks like and how understandable it is and you know that that is all overblown uh, to a certain degree and like if you look at our gaming comments it's just like as if we are still playing goats you know like that it's at some point we had too much ill will and nobody's going to recommit and in order to climb from that effect it takes so much effort and work it sometimes it never comes back right but um that's like getting over that pr is only possible with good stories and i think like taking uh charge of those stories is is really challenging but it it takes some um, some risk taking for sure. Uh, I yeah, I fundamentally agree with what you're saying, and I think that like what when I sent you my original like streaming scrims like document that was like mm -hmm. spelled worse than the seven year old child could have attempted. <laughs> um, I really felt, and I think I still truly believe that the way to grow this is it has to be through the players, you know. Um, and I think that yes. When everybody started to stream scrims, everyone's viewer count was really high. Like I remember when Astro would stream scrims, he would get like an extra like forty percent viewers. The second every team, including us, shut off comms, that drop. He had less views than he would if he was playing ranked. Um, and it feels like teams are really, really don't want you to stream comms for for your, for a few reasons. But yeah. I think once Ents stopped streaming comms. Like which was like after like day one, other teams felt like they were giving away an advantage. That's how we felt a little bit, and it was really really difficult. But I think there is like an element of bravery that is required from teams yes. because if we do it, the only way you're going to get stories is like imagine okay, like I think it. Unfortunately, I think it will never happen. But imagine you got to listen to Gumba and the team discussing between maps what was going yes. wrong against TM and what they should change. That is content which we could offer, which has to be so unbelievably juicy, and I agree. people must absolutely love it. And the, you must be able to like grow the like the, the sport a lot from that. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's I don't I don't think teams can ever do it. I just don't think teams will ever be open to that level of letting the public see, you know? Um anything else? You guys got anything coming down the pipeline? Obviously Uncoachable's coming out sometime soon. Got some bangers guests. Yiska? Um what we got? I, I mean, I've, I've been trying to get an interview with one of the Defined players. Hopefully it's coming this week. And then, uh, yeah, I just, like, going to keep up. I guess, like, I'm in a blood feud with Com Commander X, according to Christopher now, so I gotta start shooting back with some more interviews. You do? You gotta look at it as the rivalry, you know? <laughs> Maybe one that's, sport out in the that's, that's, like, a... It's, it's not a, a terrible... Um, way to look at it right like it, it, there's also benefit there for sure um yeah and then I'll, otherwise like looking to look a little bit into uh you know the health general health of the scene and where it's at right now i think a lot of the topics we covered today in terms of like salaries and like um the the uh the involvement with esports world cup and whatnot i'm looking into that but nothing to report there yet Amazing. All right. That's it. 337 in the books. Chris, thank you so much for coming and chatting. My pleasure. Good luck in stage two. And uh, we will see you guys next week. GG's. Oops. See ya.